so that, that's why I believe in this kind of stuff. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Welcome to day two of Raw Food Week. To introduce today's guest, please welcome back Dr. Doug Graham. Hi, AJ. Thanks for having me back. I'm, I'm glad to be back. It's always a treat, and I get a special honor today because I get to tell you about Shari Leiterman. Uh, Shari and I go back to the late 80s. I met her in the late 80s at a health retreat, of course. I mean, that's the place to meet people uh, who are like-minded. You go to the places where you're interested. But I met Shari. She was finishing up her work in, in personal training, where she's finished up that degree. She was working uh, with a with a health food company that doesn't need to be named, but um, <laughs> she was she was doing a lot of things in the health field and just expressed wanting to know a bunch more. Came out and ended up working with me, running my health retreat for four years, uh, all the way up until 1992. So ever since then, we've stayed in touch high regard. I, I have sent her tons of clients. She sent me tons of clients. We've done endless retreats together over the last 30 years. If I want the best chef that I can get that will make food the way I like it, I bring Shari on board to my retreats. If I need a personal trainer for health and fitness week, I know Shari is perfectly capable. Um, I have complete trust in this woman and uh, I've just never seen her put a foot wrong. So I'm not going to say more except listen to Shari, folks, because she knows what she's talking about. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Graham, and welcome to the show, Shari. I'm so excited for today's episode because regardless of who the guest is, and the guest could be like somebody talking about painting, our audience always wants to know what our guest eats in a day. But I think this is going to be particularly useful because as a raw fooder for over, I think you said, 30 years, I think people wonder, what do you eat and what can I eat to incorporate more raw food into my diet? Well, thank you for having me here. I'm honored. And thank you, Dr. Graham, for the lovely introduction. Um, I, I didn't always eat this way, of course. And my journey, like everyone else, started out stumbling, falling off the wagon and getting back up again. And that's what I, that's what I tell my clients as well. So the first premise that I learned from Dr. Graham way back when was earn your meals. I'm like, what's that? I wasn't even an athlete. I wasn't even really active back then. So um, you know, when I get up, I do my, I have my little routine, my affirmations, my prayers. I, I really honor and have gratitude for my life and where I am. Then I go exercise. So I've got to get my cardio in. I do weights, um, swimming, tennis, not so much biking out here in Florida. It's a little dangerous. Um, I like the heat, so I like to sweat and then I'll come back and I'll make myself a smoothie. So I'm pretty simple, okay? I think I eat very simply and I eat till I'm full. Um, I know Dr. Trader mentioned, you know, you can track what you eat and you can use chronometer. Um, I just have been doing this so long that I just know what to eat, right? I love greens. You ask me what my favorite food is, lettuce. Like I can just eat five, six, heads of lettuce and I'm happy, right? But that's not going to sustain me. So, um, and I know we don't wanna eat a lot of over fat. So I do have some tahini here today because that happens to be my favorite along with um, Florida avocados. So, but I can omit that anytime. When I've worked with Dr. Graham, we've gone fat free and the food is still delicious. And I will say, and Tim mentioned it yesterday, I think you asked him, What's, it, what's his favorite meal? And he said, the meal that I'm eating. And last night when I was watching that and eating, I'm like, you know what? That's so true. Every time I eat, I'm like, this is so good. I feel so nourished. I'm so happy and so grateful. So, you know, it does take time if you're going out to plan where you're going. I always have food in my car. People think I'm a bag lady, whatever. So really for today, I have a few machines that I use, but you don't even have to do that, right? So um, I did freeze some bananas. And if you know, don't know about Dr. Graham, he will eat 15 frozen bananas for his meal. 
So I blend mine up. I, I don't want to eat frozen bananas particularly and um, fresh bananas. And I'll put a couple fresh bananas in there. What I have had many conversations about recently are people saying, oh, that's disgusting. Why would I eat a banana that looks like that? They like green and starchy bananas. You know, they still like the green on there. I can't eat that, it sticks to my mouth. Um, my body doesn't particularly like it that way. So I will take these and if there's any bruising on them, I'll just cut that off and either I will freeze them or I will eat them, okay? So, and after I work out, I'm gonna try to get that smoothie in as, as, as soon as possible. So I leave the gym, go home and make my food. Um, so I'm gonna start with that. I do. You want me to just do one meal and then talk about it? Yeah, and then absolutely. And I'd like to know like your story that got you to this point, because you said you've been doing it for over 30 years. What were you doing before and what convinced you or what got you interested in eating this way? Were you already vegan? Did you have any health challenges or weight challenges? So I'll do this short and dirty. Um, so I had a lot of health challenges as a child. Um, if you see my shoulders are off, I have scoliosis, but I wore a back brace. It was pretty severe. Um, that was very challenging from age 13 to 18. Um, it, at that time, those braces were molded to your pelvis, um, a neck piece, little screws in the back and a pad here and a pad here. And the only thing I was concerned about is if I was going to have breasts when I grew up. Isn't that funny? Like, I didn't like, is my back going to be straight? Um, so I wore that. I had corrective shoes. I wore braces and a headgear. I was really quite the contraption. And my mother said I was kind of like the ugly duckling. So I, my mother was really very uh, supportive and helped me through that journey. I wasn't really much of an exercise person or we didn't eat well either. We had a drawer full of, well, let's just say my sisters and I like to party. <laughs> so we had Twinkies and cupcakes and all kinds of crud. I don't really remember eating much real food growing up. And my parents both worked there. They were psychologists. Um, I had a great upbringing, but the food was really not nutritious and not, I, I'm, I would say I'm pretty lucky that I just had those physical problems, structural problems, really. Um, it wasn't until I finished my first degree and I was uh, working and, at a bank and I was partying a lot. And I had this epiphany one night, I was sitting in my car and I was crying and I said, what a shallow existence this is, God. And by the next day, I stopped smoking, I stopped drinking, I changed my life. You know, I, don't, I didn't even know what I was doing. I started going to aerobic classes and I became an aerobics instructor. And I don't know how many years later, my mother said she was going to be the president of Colby Sawyer College and I was fortunate enough to go and get my degree in exercise physiology and that changed the vector of my life. Wow, so literally overnight. Literally overnight and um, when before I actually went back to school, I mean, I was running and I was running downtown and I saw this truck and it had all these cows hanging in it and I just freaked out and I said, okay, I'm done with the meat. Um, and where I was living up north, going to school, there were a lot of people doing macrobiotics. Ugh. And I tried that. And that was so challenging to cook everything and not eat any fruit and on and on and on. And, and the people looked very, they didn't look healthy to me. So I ended up not doing that. I did an internship in Florida and I was fortunate enough, as Doug mentioned, to be at the right place at the right time. And I saw this flyer at a health food store and it said raw food retreat, $35 for the weekend. So I jumped in the car with some friends and I went. And uh, again, just going on faith and met Dr. Graham, changed my life. Wow, so you didn't even try like regular veganism first. I, you know, I worked for a food guide when I was uh, getting my degree. And I think I, I started juicing and just exercising. And uh, I was fortunate enough, my boss actually gave me um, the manual for natural hygiene. He said, I, I have this, you might be interested in this. So that was a gift. And then I just kept meeting the right people. And I am so grateful because 
when I look around, as I'm sure you do, there are so many people struggling. And if we can be a light and just lift somebody up and say, look, it's, it's not that complicated. Just give it a shot. You know, um, I know you were asking yesterday, like, I like my cooked foods. I like how I feel. I do too. Here's my thought learning from being around Doug for so many years and around so many athletes. Cause I'm not at that. I, I don't consider myself that strong of an athlete, but I am athletic. I just never knew I was, um, an athlete is always looking to improve their game, right? Whether it's their strength, their endurance, their mental capacity, whatever it is. And that's how I feel about this lifestyle. Like if I can feel better than I already do, holy cow. Oopsie. I think you have to, uh, we got some people coming in. Yeah, I don't know who these people are, but they're not, they can't come in because they're not guests. So I don't know why there's a bunch of people trying to get into this broadcast. Okay. Unless somebody gave them the link. So, okay, so well, maybe can they, can we somehow? Yeah, I can, I can get rid of them. Okay. I mean, All right. It's, it's, it's mean as it is. I will. It's not mean. It's not meant to be mean. Okay. So basically that's what I've been doing for the last many, many years. I did go, I think, I know I went vegan for a while, but that was short term cooked food to uh, transition to raw food. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. It's, it's been a so, while. So it's been 30 years. Do you, do you have friends and family that eat the way you eat? My friends, some of my friends, not many of my friends, like um, some people in the area are going raw and they actually have committed to doing hundred days raw through the um, Let's Cook Raw show with Dr. Graham. So I know that um, when I'm around people such as yourself and Dr. Graham, we're influential in what we do. And people are always asking, what are you eating? And can I try it? So um, my family's not my best friends, not all of them, but that's okay. I still love them and we can still eat together and I can take whatever I want or not eat. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal anymore for me. Wow. So no, no cravings, no, uh, no recidivism, no looking back. Not at all. And you know, when that happened, when I realized I was so on track and on point is when I had, um, my first child and then, well, both of my kids, um, but my second child is 16. Doug's child is, is your daughter 16 or 17? Okay. So um, I finally was able to have a home birth and I went for a two mile walk. I came home and literally that baby, <laughs> it's like a football. And I was like, that was so easy. My body feels great. I wanted a smoothie. I was ready to go. And I thought after all these years and I'm an older mother, okay. So but I had no fear this time and everything The my midwives actually told me they have never seen such a clean birth. I was very fortunate. It was not traumatic, dramatic. It was simple. It was easy. And I attribute it to living a clean lifestyle. So did you raise your kids on a hundred percent raw diet? They started that way. They did start that way. I've been married a couple of times and uh, they were not, 100% raw. So it was a challenge. Are they, did they stay vegan by any chance? Yes. Both of my boys are vegan and very kind, loving souls and very spiritual. I'm, I'm very blessed. Well, that is very cool. So yeah. do you want to show us like exactly like how you make your food and how much of it you make and yep. things like that? So I'm at, um, I'm in this lovely kitchen and, uh, I am using a ninja. Okay. I have a Vitamix at home. But I'm going to use this ninja here and tell me if you can actually see. So I'm going to put, so that's one frozen banana, two frozen bananas, three frozen bananas in there. Okay. And I think I'll do four because I really haven't eaten a lot today. So, and I'm going to put some water, like a third cup of water into this ninja. And I'm going to put a couple fresh bananas, okay? I like that consistency. Everybody's different. Some people might just want complete frozen bananas. Some people just might want some ice and water and fresh bananas. You have to play with it. And you decide the consistency that you like. If you want to put some carrot powder in there, some cinnamon powder in there, whatever you want. I actually have 
some uh, medjool dates. So I already took the pits out and I'm gonna put one, two, three. I'll put three in there, that's plenty. And basically that's how I like my smoothie. Pretty, pretty simple. I do have some carob here. So I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of carob in there, right on the top. And that's it. Okay, I'm gonna turn that on and we'll just blend this up, okay? Can you see that? So there it is. It's just basically almost full. Let's make sure. I'm... AJ, the consistency is whatever you like. If you want it chunky, if you want it really smooth, if you want it thick, this is pretty watery. So it's pretty hot here. Personally, if I'm going to be out in the sun and I'm doing a real high cardio uh, workout and I'm sweating a lot, I really want to replenish. You know, I do eat a lot, of, a lot of high water content food because I like my greens, I like my cucumbers, I like my celery. So but I do, I do like my smoothies pretty, pretty runny. It does not look yummy. Well, so it's just, it's just fruit, Shari. You don't put any greens in your morning smoothie. Not my morning one. Maybe my afternoon one. It really depends. I eat a lot of salad. Okay. I eat a lot of greens and I will tell you that, um, I always have, and I already have it here. When I serve, I will have lettuce and celery or cucumbers with every meal. If you come to any of our retreats, Dr. Graham's retreats, there's always greens, cucumbers. Tons of cucumbers, tons of lettuce and celery. I can get that on there. So basically, that's the drink. That took what, three minutes, something like that? Well, it looks good, like, like okay. having a milkshake. Yes, it is like having a milkshake, all right. So I would drink the whole thing, okay? If I was making it for probably Dr. Graham, he might drink two of those or one and a half. And if he's having his frozen bananas, he probably will have maybe a small glass. All depends on the, the type of workout that we're doing. Like in Costa Rica, super fun. Weightlifting, swimming, hiking. We're burning a lot of calories and it's hot. So we need to really replenish. And a lot of times other people will just do watermelon in the morning or mango or some berries. I just, something you don't know about me is, I mean, I can go without eating. So I, I really need to remind myself to replenish. Okay. So that's why I like to have my bananas. I'll go for hours and like, oh shoot, you know, um, and I know how important it is. So I, I got to replenish. So it's very, very important for me to just kind of keep it simple. Yeah. Do I have a sweet tooth? Do you have a sweet tooth? I like my date and my, my new fun friend are these dried mulberries. So I get these at this um, Middle Eastern store where I get my tahini. And uh, I, if I'm gonna make ice cream or more smoothie, I'll put these in. So now I got this crunchy, yummy uh, texture in my food, okay? So somebody's saying when they eat, maybe this is a question for Dr. Graham on Friday, but somebody says when they eat a lot of bananas, their potassium goes up and that when they eat a lot of fruit, they have serious bloating. Is it these things that maybe get better and the longer they eat this way? Yeah, Doug, if you want to go, uh, you can, you want to answer, you can. For me, that's about the right amount of bananas for me. So this person can journal and keep track of what they're eating. Are they stressed out? I mean, what else is going on? We don't really know if they've had previous digestive issues. Maybe they need to add some more greens to their bananas. So it's not just a, a I don't worry about my potassium. I don't really worry about my, 
my nutrients. Although the other day, I will say I went a couple of days without bananas and I had, um, had a cramp. I ran really, really hard though. And I didn't stretch. So there are other factors involved. Maybe I didn't drink enough water that day. So, um, Doug, if you want to make a response, go right ahead. And then I will. Oh, it's the Shari show tonight, but Ooh. I would say, I agree with you that, that you don't want to take a snapshot and then come to big conclusions you need you know you want to help somebody with their health you want to ask all the appropriate questions but the cool thing about live food the cool thing about eating fruits and vegetables is that is that it's biologically very very active as opposed to cooked food which is tends to be much more inert and so if you're going to experience a change in the microbia of your intestines um you know, some of that can be accompanied by the increased production of wind. Um, if you eat beyond your digestive capacity, wind. If you poor com poorly combine, wind. Uh, yeah, a lot of things can result in wind, especially for beginners. Absolutely. I will say at that retreat, that's the one thing I was like, whoa, I am very vocal eating 100% raw food when I had never done it before, you know, so lots of factors involved. Oh. Dina says, Shari, do you use only romaine lettuce or do you use other greens? Oh, I love kale. I love kale. I like, um, I don't do a ton of cauliflower and broccoli unless I, I blend it up. Like I'll make some guacamole. I love um, collard, collard greens, kale, beet greens. What else? Um, what are the other ones? <laughs> I like them all. I do love romaine, but I will eat bit, uh, Boston Biv. I'll eat all the other lettuces. I have a spring mix that I buy. I just, you know, I don't really like to buy it in the plastic because it goes bad really fast, but I will do spring mix. I love arugula. I love spinach. I love all my greens. I used to just basically eat greens and lemon. I mean, <laughs> I just, Mono meals are fun as well. On this journey, you're gonna practice and, and play with different types of foods. It's so important and to yeah, try a variety, especially if you're in other countries and other places. Go to the Asian stores, go to the Middle Eastern stores. They always have much more of a variety than your typical grocery store. Become friends with your grocer and ask for more tropical and exotic. I think one of the things that if, if people have resistance is of this lifestyle, specifically the 100% raw, is the social aspect. I think sometimes it's hard enough, you know, I've been vegan for 44 years, but that, that there's even more restrictions. So like, how do you dine out? You know, things like that, people wonder. Okay, so I know the places I can go. And right now there's so many more vegan places than ever before, okay? So I will tell you that a lot of these vegan restaurants, there's a limited number of dishes that are basically salad or uncooked. So I will put in a request or I might even call ahead. I typically carry stuff with me. I'm not kidding you. I have stuff in my car just in case. In the beginning, it was a challenge. Um, but at this point, it's, it's not such a big deal because I'm happier to socialize than anything else. I can make a smoothie and put it in my water bottle and, and the restaurant won't even know. Most places can do smoothies now. Um, you have to be creative and it's okay to ask for, for something that you like. Most, there's a pizza place around the corner from where I live, they'll do vegan pizza and they make a great salad. Now, mind you, sometimes it's iceberg and I've requested them to put different lettuces and different greens in, and they'll do it. And I mean, that fills me up for other people. It serves them for two or three days, okay? So they really make a nice volume of salad. Um, and if you're still vegan and going raw, then you can get a small salad and some steamed vegetables if that's what you want, you know? So you never miss, you never miss the hot, the, you know, the hotness of food, meaning, meaning not spicy hotness, but things being warm. Um, I have a little cocoa moco maker, so it doesn't boil it, but it warms it up. And I just plug it in if I wanna like make a smoothie um, or what did I make the other day? I had some almond, I made some almond milk and threw a little carob in there and a little date and just heated it up. So 
I do like things warm, but I don't really miss it. In the beginning, I did, you know, when I started out with uh, Dr. Graham at the, at the clinic, the retreat, there was this journey, you know, he's perfected it. This is like amazing. But during that journey, absolutely, sometimes try something else. Wow, cool. So yeah. I, take, I take it you've been in perfect or very good health these last 30 years? I feel like it when I tell people I have all my body parts, nothing's fake, everything works. I'm not on medications. Um, you know, I didn't know in the beginning that when you clean your lifestyle up, how hygienic one can become. I didn't know that I wasn't, that I didn't have to smell anymore, that my body odor changed, that my eliminatory processes changed. Like nobody talks about that. So that was fascinating to me. And my skin at my age, I mean, I feel, I feel better than ever. And I've had some major heartache and stress in my life, but from practicing um, healthy habits and healthy eating and meditating, and it's not just the food, right? It really isn't just the food. It's having the right support and getting the, the proper and clean water and exercise and sleep and putting all of that, that piece together makes it work because we are bombarded with all of this stuff out there. We know that there are lies and there are myths and tons of marketing, tons of marketing to distract us and affect our health and well-being. And I'm all about being a warrior, a wellness warrior. That's my path, especially for women. So it's exciting because, you know, if you look up middle-aged women, do you know what it says? Crisis hormone problems. It's all negative. They never say how freaking awesome we are. <laughs> are we allowed to ask your age? Because a couple people are asking. I'm in my 50s. How about that? I don't tell my age. <laughs> That's okay. Well, will you tell the secret to your toned arms and shoulders that's being asked? Okay. So if you ask, I like to ask this question. Do you, is there a part of your body that you like the most? Yeah, my nose. I love my nose. Oh, okay. So I don't even think I don't, that's not something I love about my face. <laughs> so that's good to know. Um, I think that I have always been fortunate to have a little bit of biceps. Uh, my body, because I, I told you I wasn't really an athlete. When I started getting active and um, hanging out with Dr. Graham, I had no idea that my body would respond so well. So I love um, lifting weights and recently doing more squatting and leg work. That's not my favorite, but I do like it. Actually, I love it. Um, I love achieving a next level of fitness. So I do um, cardio every day, anywhere from 30 to 45 to an hour. If I can squeeze it in, I like doing push-ups and sit-ups, um, planks. I do yoga twice a week. And um, I do bicep curls, I'll do triceps, I'll do flies. So I do upper body work and then I do ab work. And I like to swim. And I think the swimming recently has really helped develop my shoulders. So kind of fun. <laughs> so thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. Nice. So you've done, you got breakfast and about how many hours later do you mosey on to lunch or do you have to earn that meal too? No, I mean, I get... Um, I, I make food for other people. So I'll go to their house and make food. And when I'm done, or I might be eating while I'm making some food for them to, I mean, I'm tasting it, of course. It's probably more like, I don't know, two or three in the afternoon. So uh, I really like my greens, but I would like to just make a quick ice cream and I'll have ice cream for dinner. Like that's my favorite greens and ice cream for dinner. So I would work out all day long if I could. <laughs> and I will say, you know, well, maybe I won't say it, but I'll just do this. I'm just, do you have any other questions? <laughs> when, um, when you do the retreats with Dr. Graham, what kind of food are you serving? Are you food serving mostly smoothies or salads or do you get a little fancy? 
We get fancy. We have everything. We have it. We have um, dehydrators there, so we'll do dried uh, bananas. We can make pancakes. We'll do stuffed mushrooms. We have uh, sliders, burgers. Lots of fun burgers. Oh my gosh, the burgers are in um, different variety of salads. It depends what is available in Costa Rica. That you know, clean to eat. You know, you have to be careful in the countries where you are if some of those vegetables uh, might cause some, some issues. So we're very particular, whatever uh, Dr. Graham is saying that we can eat and buy them will do that. So people that are living there can have probably a better variety because they're eating it, but there are some things that we just don't eat while we're, while we're there. Ice cream, smoothies, every, we'll do whatever we can. It's certainly not as simple as what I eat. No, we, we have some fun and we make more gourmet with and without fat. Dressings are always with and without fat. So we always have that option. Oh, uh, Dina says, when is the next retreat? And do the participants help to prepare the food? Next one, hopefully, I believe, Dr. Graham can correct me, should be in January. The, the goal is a fasting retreat in January. The last was for interns. I don't know if he's going to have another internship program coming up. And what was the second question? Uh, do the participants help to prepare the food at the retreats? Absolutely. That's part of the, part of the program. And um, are the burgers also raw? Renee wants to know. Yes, they are. They're so good. Oh my God. <laughs> they're so, they're delicious. They're amazing. And they're so fun to make and they're so easy. Easy, no grease, no mess. It's just, and you can eat whatever, I mean, whatever you're putting in the ingredient for the burger is just as delicious as when it's actually done. So, are they made primarily of vegetables? Yes, they are. Uh, we have, you can put some avocados in there. You can put some sunflower seeds. You can put some sesame seeds, um, some tahini. Really kind of depends what, what we're going for. Mm. Marcy says, do you have trouble, any trouble getting enough calories? No, no, I don't. I like, I, no, I don't. I have, like I said, I have a tendency to not eat. I'm getting better at it. You know, I mean, I, I will share with you that when um, I was on this journey in the beginning, um, I had an obsession to actually like be empty. Like I just wanted to be empty. So I started using, um, I forget what the thing's called, but anyway, I, I had a bout of anorexia for a while and I worked through it. So I don't really get on the scale very much. And I'm very aware if any of that emotion comes up and plays a part, but it's like almost, almost never. And if it does, it's related to stress. And then I just need to go walk or meditate or pray and I'm over it. I love to eat and I don't worry about that on this lifestyle. That's the biggest plus I think I can say is that it's not a concern that I'm gonna harm myself or I'm gonna overdo it. Um, you do get used to feeling full. Okay. And then you know that your body is going to do what it needs to do. And a few hours later, you're not going to feel so full by the time you wake up in the morning, you are ready to go again. So again, it's, it's, it's learning your body and learning food. And there are nuances to this. So baby steps or take big leaps. You're going to do great. Just get some support. So here's a question out from where did it go? It's what your favorite fruit is. Richard wants to know. Today, right now in Florida are uh, papayas. Okay. And, and mangoes. So these are local mangoes. I'm going to cut those up. I just sit and eat these as many as I can. Um, and actually we have some really good blackberries lately. So I've been digging on these too. So is so, that what's, is your lunch going to be more of a fruit-based lunch or a salad-based lunch? 
We're gonna do another food-based lunch with some greens and then I'll make you a, a nice salad. How about that? That sounds great. People they are really people are really interested in raw burgers and how they're made. They somebody said Dr. Graham had one. I guess he made from carrots that look really good at some <laughs> someplace. Oh, he makes them all the time. He brags about it. I'm like, Doug, what'd you eat tonight? Burgers. And I'm like, oh. oh. Um, there's a question. Did you, did you struggle with anorexia before you went vegan or before you went raw or was it afterwards? And we had an expert on anorexia, the doctor that is a very good uh, doctor for that this week oh. on the show. Um, I believe, oh, yes. Okay. What happened was I was, I finished up my internship in Florida and I went back to get my degree to complete my degree and it was winter and nobody else was doing what I was doing. And I think I just, it was, it was definitely an emotional time for me. And everyone was like, oh, you shouldn't be running in the winter. And oh, you're too skinny. And oh, you don't eat enough. You know, all this, all of their own projection. And um, it just took me down because it was new to me. So I wasn't strong enough at that time. And I was lucky enough to have Dr. Graham to support me through that and just kept coaching me and I made it through. And I'm, I'm so, so grateful because it was really hard because when you know in your heart, you're doing the right thing and everybody's just coming at you. And that was a long time ago. Now there's so much support, right? Everybody's on Instagram, all these amazing people making food. Um, there's tons of raw foodies. So you, there's enough support now. Um, and there's, like I said, there's nuances to it. So yeah, it was about nine months that I went through that and then done. Yeah. Here's an interesting question from Karen. She says, when I eat raw, I have less energy. Will anything help with that? And I found when I was raw, I had too much energy and couldn't sleep. And that's why I think I love my starches because they make me sleepy. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, so she's tired. Well, that would be I wonder if she's eat, I wonder if she's eating enough calories for her needs. Yeah. See, it's, it's there's a lot of questions there. If she's eating enough, is she eating more fats? Is she getting enough fruit? Is she There's a lot of questions. Um, and I don't know what she was doing and how long she's been doing it. So, if she wants to message, happy to talk to her. Maybe Dr. Graham wants to dress up you can address that and I can blend this little bit of smoothie up and then make my next dish. So I'm on time here, right? That's okay. And the, the uh, Zoom is muting the blender. So don't even worry about the sound. Oh, okay. Well, let me just do this real quickly. Okay, that's all I need to do. So maybe she's not sleeping enough. Maybe she's not um, getting any exercise. I don't I mean, I don't know if there were any medications. There's lots of things that go into answering that question. So if she wants to put a couple things in the notes there, maybe we can try to decipher a bit more. I'm gonna say, don't give up. That's, that's what I'm gonna say. Start your day with some, some fruit that you like, get out in the sun, um, do some meditation, look for some good recipes. We can send you those. Look at what your calories are, get on chronometer, start tracking it. That's a good idea. A lot of people are saying bloating, bloating, bloating. I'm hearing a lot about bloating. Well, uh, yeah, I went through a lot of bloating too. So I guess the food combining is important too, right? It's huge. So I mentioned mono meals. I make food with five ingredients or less typically just because of that reason. And I want to taste what's in it. Um, I've made exceptions and felt bloated. You know, I, I do have something that I like that is really a no-no. But every once in a while, I'll do it just because I want it. What is it? Come on, you tell. <laughs> What's your no-no? So I like to make halva, right? Which is a Jewish treat. So there's carob, there's dates, there's almonds, you know. And typically, you don't want to mix dried fruit with your nuts. But 
I freaking love it. So I know, well, okay, if I'm going to eat that and I eat a lot of greens too, and I space out the time between my meals when I do that. I'm not like eating an entire batch of it though. You know what I mean? Cause I couldn't, cause I'd get, I wouldn't feel good. Um, but I could get bloated for that from that for sure. So I'm not going to mix watermelon, you know, with some other dried food or, I mean, it doesn't even sound right with bananas or things like that. So typically do your melons and your berries together. It's fine. Papaya, mango, that's all good. Um, I don't know if she's mixing nuts with something else that might really be upsetting. And I, I don't eat a whole lot of nuts. You know, I, I mentioned I'd make mock tuna. When I make that mock tuna though, I put it in a collard green and lots of tomatoes and onions and um, probably just a dollop of it. I don't, I don't jam it full because I just don't eat a ton of nuts, but there are times when I really like to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Richard says, how does Shari keep getting more beautiful? Do you know Richard? Is that Richard in uh, The Running Man? I love you, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet. Richard G. His last name starts with yes, a G. I know who it is. Okay, good. Because I wouldn't want somebody like harassing you that you didn't know. Not that that's a harassment, but you know. Oh, no, that's so sweet. That's oh, you, you know, a lot of people are saying, do you recognize, it, 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 like for people, and I'm sure Dr. Graham will talk about this on Friday. Is there a book? you recommend for people that are getting started or a book on food combining that might be helpful for people that are new to this way of eating. That's the man right there. I have the books right here. Yeah. I mean, he's got a chart with all the calories and nutrients in it. Let me grab this. Hold on. So look at that. 80, 10, 10 food combining. It's really, and once you get it down, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, what's this one? In the absence of health, one cannot truly be free. Isn't that poignant for our time in this world? Ugh. And I tell you what, you eat this way, your fear and your panic is gone. If you know you're healthy and strong, you know how the body works, this whole immunity thing would just be not a conversation. Um, sorry. Um, let me, so I just made this little batch, okay, of smoothie. I am going to pour a little bit of that into my papaya. So I'm gonna make a little boat here, okay? Again, it did not take me very long. What else do we wanna put in there? Hmm. How about if we put, Okay, I'm gonna put a couple chunks of apple and some blackberries in there. And how about some mangoes? Who doesn't like a mango, right? You have another question? Can you see what I'm doing? Um, maybe tilt it a little bit. I can't see the cutting board. Okay. okay. It's better, thank you. Okay, so I'm just taking my mango, putting it on the side. Just make sure you talk or otherwise Zoom will go to me instead of you. Okay, so I'm just taking the two halves of this mango and I'm just going to cut it so I can make it really pretty like this. I'm gonna put it on the side. If you wanna scoop it out, it scoops out really easily, right? So I can just actually scoop this and put it into the boat. And if it you know, if it overflows, who cares? One thing I will say too is when you have any of the um, fruit left, you can squeeze that and you can see it. You, there's so much left in here that all of these, um, the skins you can squeeze and you'll get a lot of juice out of it. So there's really no waste. Okay. And put this back up. Um, Anything else I want to put in there? And then here's some lettuce on the side. And basically, how about that? Can you see that? Mm, nice. Okay. And if I want more, I still have more to eat. So typically, I'll, I'll probably eat the other half. 
You know what I'm saying? The other half of the papaya. And I'm definitely going to eat this seed. <laughs> I love to eat the pits of the mangoes. That's my favorite part. Over the sink, make a mess, good to go. But if you decide you don't want to do that, peel it and just squeeze it and put it back in the blender. And you've got a lot of mango left over to make something else. Okay. What do you do for holidays or do you do anything different if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas? Yes, of course. I participate in all holidays. I'm a party girl. I like to go to all of those events. Um, I'll make, typically, I will make a, um, a pie. When I go to Thanksgiving, um, I'll make a beautiful, I have a beautiful Christmas kale salad that I like to make. It's got all the great colors. Um, I always bring food to those events. I mean, I don't. I like to celebrate. So I also, well, the last many years, I would invite my friends that probably weren't going anywhere or that were single or just vegan and raw and everybody would potluck. And it was a beautiful evening of gratitude. Nice, here's some questions. Do you sprout? I love sprouts. I haven't sprouted in a while, but yes, I love sprouts. I love microgreens, oh my gosh. Um, I have a friend, he has a container and he does all his microgreens in a container and he also uh, grows mushrooms, the lion's mane. So yes, love, love, love sprouting. Great. And uh, how do you keep your greens fresh, asks Susanna, and how often do you have to shop? I shop um, probably every three days and I wrap my greens in just a, a cloth with water or some of those green bags. Like I said, I really don't like the plastic containers at all because my food spoils really fast. Um, so want, like the herbs, I like to put the herbs, just trim them and put them in a, in a cup in the water. And there's some new cool things they have to keep your herbs fresh. Um, just a little container, you can keep it on your counter. There's all kinds of cool gadgets to do that. Great. And speaking of herbs, Dina says, do you use dried herbs or fresh herbs and spices? I love to use fresh herbs. I have a favorite. Here it is. So <laughs> this one's called Zatar. This is from the Middle Eastern store. So um, I like this one. It's a nice blend. Um, I do like the non-salt spike. I like to make my own as well. So I'll do a combo. I love paprika. Like I like the hot paprika and I love cumin. Garlic is okay. I don't need a lot of garlic. Onion, I like some red onion every once in a while. Love lemon. And um, I like oregano too. So cumin's kind of my favorite. Are there any things that shouldn't be eaten raw? Like I once heard that broccoli has some kind of a mycotoxin and it shouldn't be eaten raw. No, you can eat broccoli. But not mushrooms raw, right? That's what doctor said yesterday. I know that's what um that's that's what that's what uh Dr. Trader said, but I eat mushrooms. <laughs> I love mushrooms. I do the um what are the big ones? The shiitake. So what those are? You can turn those into to burgers. And I, I know, Doug, when you were in the I forget which country you were in, there was a new huge mushroom that you were eating with your burger. That looked fascinating. I don't eat a ton of mushrooms, but I do eat them. I don't eat potatoes cooked or raw. And I get yesterday you mentioned sweet potato. I've taken sweet potato and carrots and made a soup with it and they were uncooked. So those are the things I eat. So that's cool. Well, sweet potatoes are very starchy, so you can have these on a raw diet. I don't just eat them like that. I, I, I blend them up. I've made a pie with them. It's not, you know, I don't eat a lot of them, but I have done that for sure. Made okay. a soup. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Wait, I just saw somebody's asking, um, Becca says, do microgreens have more nutrients than sprouts? They're, I mean, they're the most living thing that you can eat. So I haven't broken that down. I guess Doug can answer that one. They, they're pretty, they're pretty nutritious and I just eat as much as I want of them. Great. Um, 
the question, how do you keep all your fruit fresh? Well, um, I let the ones that need to ripen, ripen on the counter. And then if they get to the point where they're, they might go bad, I'll freeze them or dehydrate them or eat them. So, I mean, I have a ton of bananas, right? So by the end of today, I better do something with these. So they're going to go in the fridge until I peel them and freeze them. But I told you, I like my bananas ripe. I don't like the starchy ones. Everyone, everyone's a little different. Um, you have to stay on top of it. You know, these mangoes, these are ready. These are ready to go. So when you're planning your week out, if you're going to buy a case of bananas or whatever you're buying, you have to know how long they're going to take to ripen in the climate in which you're living. For it is very different from a colder climate. I learned that the hard way. Um, yeah, that's it. So you have to be on top of it a little bit. Cool. So we've got, we've got breakfast, we've got lunch. So far, it's been primarily fruit. What have you got for us for dinner? And do you snack or is it just three meals? I got all these cucumbers here. So my cucumber would go right with, with my, my lunch meal. Or this could be part of my dinner meal if I wanted it to be. Um, do I snack? Yeah, I mean, if I'm running crazy, my fast food is grabbing apples and berries and things like that. But, uh, you know. Like I said, if I skip a meal, I better, I do have my little, my little grab and goes. So that's going to be something that's cucumber and berry. Is it like a cooler or is it like, I have like these purses that are actually coolers, but they look like purses. Yes, I have those. And then I have a really big one that I got from like Sam's club. And I just keep the cold packs in there because my day is kind of crazy and I'm going in different areas and then I want to work out. I don't know exactly where I'm going to be. And the traffic is really crappy here. So my car looks like a house. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it does. Okay, so I'm gonna move these out of the way and um, get my little spiralizer. So there's lots of them. This one I just picked up. I like to buy machines. It's really kind of a kitchen, kitchen stuff. I don't know if you do that. If I see something on sale, whether it's a knife or other kind of gadgets, I'm gonna get it. So let's see here. So you can, well, this is just, a, just a, one that I just got because it's easy and quick. So now I had some really big cucumbers today. So let me get a plate so I can collect. Do you spiralize, AJ? Do you like to spiralize? I do. I do like to spiralize things like zucchini and it's just fun. It is fun. So let's just put that in there. Now, I'm not going to do all of them, but the size bowl that I would fill up, you know, would be this one. And I already have my greens in here. I'm going to chop my lettuce and I'm going to put some other items in there. And then I'll just make a dressing. And that's, that's what I'm going to have tonight. Okay pretty simple. So I could do the dressing with uh, mango and tahini or and tomato or maybe I don't have to put the tahini in there. But like I said, I really like my tahini. So just a tablespoon or less. Maybe a tablespoon has eight grams of fat. I think that's what that is. The only thing I don't like, you know, sometimes when you're doing this cucumber is it's such a juicy one, it spills over that hay. That's not really a big deal. So you see how these are coming out. And you have other um, choices on how you're going to slice them up. So you have a wider peel, a thicker noodle. So you have choice. It doesn't have to be the same size noodle every time. And you can get other people to help you do this because it's really fun. So get people to play in the kitchen with you, especially if you've got friends over or kids. They love to do this stuff. Show them how to play with the machine. Show them how to hold a knife. Get them involved. You know, most people are like, oh, can I help you? So this one does that, but it's fine. Encourage people. Have fun with their food. Have that connection. Same with their their body and just 
it's a fun process to have that type of connection. We're not really taught that. Okay, so I'm gonna take these noodles and I'm gonna pour them in this bowl. Now, these ones cut pretty well because I cut the cucumber a nice size, but if you're gonna put that whole cucumber in there, guess what? Your noodles are gonna be so long, you're gonna to wanna to cut them. So this is, this is a decent size. Does that make sense? Just like your spaghettis. So put that in there. Now I have some of that mango left over. Let me see that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this mango, okay. And I'm gonna scoop that in there. Do you eat Moringa? There's a question. Oh my gosh, Moringa is like so hyped up. I can't even tell you how many people want superfoods. So <laughs> no, I mean, I know a lot of people are growing the trees. There's a lot of um, people that love Moringa and say it's helping them. It's not something I go after. And do you um, ever use plantains? Yes. We make smoothies with plantains. We dehydrate plantains. Yeah. They're not one of my favorites though, but they're good every once in a while. So you can put them in smoothies. My son loves plantain. It's much heavier. So if you want a heavier smoothie, definitely use it. Okay, so... I also have some tomatilla. So I'm gonna put some tomatilla in here because I, I like the, the saltiness of it. Okay. Uh, Dina says, guessing that you and none of the other raw foodists use nutritional yeast. No, maybe in the beginning. I mean, it tastes good, it's cheesy. People think they're getting their, their bees out of there, but the answer is no to that. You know, but if they want to wean off of that slowly, remember it's a transition, it's a journey. Not everybody's going to dive in full force. So you can make that kind of flavor, you know, with some other um, herbs and spices to get that kind of nutty cheesy. You can take your um, coffee grinder and put some almonds in there and get that kind of texture. And then you can put some other spices in there. So we're going to put cilantro. Who doesn't love cilantro? Um, a lot of people. I like it, but I can name Dr. Doug Lyle doesn't like it. Doc, uh, John Robbins doesn't like it. Certain people just don't like it. There's just always somebody that doesn't like the cilantro. Okay, so I got these yummy tomatoes. If you can see these. Um, some heirloom baby ones here. So. so people are wondering, do you get enough protein eating mostly fruit? Oh, the magic question always comes up. <laughs> so, and then rhetorically, I can say, where do you get your protein? So I have not had meat and dairy for over 30 years. I don't drink protein supplement shakes. I could, I think I did maybe in the beginning. Um, proteins in so much of our food, we don't even know. And that's why I say that the chart that Dr. Graham has and chronometer, you would be surprised that proteins in so much um, of the fruit and vegetables that you're already eating. You just are unaware of it. And then you got to total that amount up. Do I look like I'm lacking in protein? My hair is not falling out. I still have all my body parts. My bones are okay. I function. Um, no, it's a misnomer. And I'm not, and even if I was, and nobody in this country dies of a deficiency of protein, I'm not gonna eat meat. I'm gonna eat more nuts. I'm gonna go to something else. I don't know, I haven't had legumes in forever, but I guess if I had to do- yeah, There was a question if you ever eat like legumes or grains, like sprouting them. Cause I know when I went to Rock Culinary School, they did use some of those things and they sprouted them. They, I guess they, they said they were raw, I don't know. Um, I have tried to do that with chickpeas. And I just didn't like it. And I had such bad gas. It was painful. I was like, I'm not doing this. Um, quinoa, I've sprouted quinoa and then uh, put it in the dehydrator. And then that was like my croutons, um, almonds, yes. And then the other microgreens, but I'm not, oh, 
Black Eyed Peas. I've sprouted Black Eyed Peas before and those are really good. Yeah. Yeah, so that's about that. Um, um, Susanna says, do you have, or is there a Facebook group or a support group for people that are raw? Yeah, well, Dr. Graham has a forum and I'm gonna open up another club. I used to have the Nourished You and then I closed it down on Facebook, but I think it's time to open that up again. And on Facebook, there's tons of groups. So look for raw food groups or vegan groups, but definitely raw foodies are on Facebook and it's a great community and on Clubhouse. If you all are not familiar with Clubhouse, that is really fun. Okay. So how am I doing on time, AJ? Yeah, uh, yeah we'll let, let's try to wrap it up in the next few minutes if possible. And Renee says, do you have a low cost dehydrator that you can recommend? I guess you could get one of those circular ones but the x calibers are not really that expensive. I mean- um, I had a chef on the other day that had one that was collapsible. I had never seen it. It was, it was so interesting. Wow. Well, I know that you have stuff too on your um, Amazon channel. Yeah, I, I just, I have the Excalibur and it, like you say, it's, I think it's still under $300. It's yeah. nine trays. It works very well. It's great. Okay. Let me show you this. So the salad has um, spring mix, tomatoes, onions, mango, and the tomatillas and I can find my spoon and I can measure out. Do you ever add hemp seeds to your salads? Dina wants to know. Could you repeat that? Do you ever add hemp seeds? Hemp. No, I can do hemp. I can do a little flax and I could do um, chia. I like to put it in the smoothie. So I'm just going to put this teaspoon in here. I was going to blend it up. So if I had more time, I would do mangoes, tomatoes, and tahini and just blend that up. So actually, I'm gonna do a little bit more. Okay. That was a no-no, but I didn't wanna waste it. Okay. And basically, get your hands in it. And there we go. And that would be part of my meal for dinner. I would have a little bit of fruit before I have I have, um, I have some berries over here. So I would, I would have that in my salad. So do you always, when you, you, if you're having like a savory or salad meal, do you generally eat your fruit first? I do give myself a good, probably 20 minutes or more to have that. Um, if I wanted to make some fresh juice, I could do that or blend up the papaya mango. Be nice to have that before my dinner for sure because then that's gonna help me with my desire or what if i'm thinking i want some sugar later after dinner i won't have that the fruit the fruit before your dinner makes a huge difference and that's what dr graham teaches and it, it a huge difference in what in satiety and satisfaction yes yeah, sat satiation and then you know people typically want to have something after their meal there there's no desire for that nice well thank you so much for demystifying it i mean that you just you basically just eat food i mean you know <laughs> <laughs> i do i eat real food and i like to shop for it and i like to play with it and sometimes i'll just sit down and make it simple but i like yeah. to treat myself and be grateful right. for it. I, I think as we go on through the week and then again we're going to culminate the the raw food week on day five with dr graham i think when i'm i don't know if you guys can see the chat but i think i think what people are having trouble wrapping themselves around is my audience is already primarily plant-based it's like no starch like that's what's blowing people's minds but right. you guys have been doing it for a long time you're satisfied you look good you, you know you can't argue with the results like you say it's not for everybody but yeah, my nice. goal is to get people to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables beautiful raw cook just i want people to just eat more vegetables more fruit and however they do it i'm good with that not eating animals and th this will work for some people and the people that are interested in it if they wanted to contact you or work with you what would they do shari so I'm on Facebook, uh, Shari Leiterman, and my website is rossomlivingllc.com. I'm on Instagram as rossomlivingllc, um, and I have a second Facebook page that's Rossum Living. I, I'd like to just add to what you just said. So if you're going to have starch, have a big salad with your starch. If you're going to have protein, have your big salad and have more food. Just add a little bit more. 
see how it feels and and just add you don't have to detract you don't have to say i'm never going to do this that's what makes us fail have your potatoes but have a really beautiful salad with it absolutely absolutely that's great well thank you so much thank you so much aj oh how my pleasure you? it was nice to get to know you and tomorrow guys on day three we have another what i eat in a day all the way from israel ifat malachi and she's actually going to be making a raw sushi so please come back thank you dr graham thank you shari and thanks all of you for watching another episode thank you, of everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.